till now we've studied what is economics and what is micro and macro economics now we'll see how economics has been defined by eminent eminent economists many economists have tried to define economics some have defined it as a science of wealth others have defined it as a science of material well being that is welfare others have defined it as a science of choice making choice making and finally a couple of them have defined economics as a science of dynamic growth now let's see who has defined economics in what way the first person to define economics was adam smith he defined economics as an inquiry into the nature and causes of wealth an inquiry into the nature and causes of wealth of nations now this definition told people about economics that economics is nothing but the study of wealth it is the inquiry into the nature and causes of wealth what is wealth of what is wealth and how do you create wealth what are the causes of wealth how do you grow wealth this definition was given by adam smith he published his book in 1771 with the same title an inquiry into the nature and causes of wealth of nation the next definition was given by j b say he said science which deals with wealth is economics this was one of the most simple definition at that time economics was only one dimensional it was only wealth oriented so he said a science which deals with wealth is economics then we come to the material well being definition of economics it was the first time that economics was perceived something more than wealth it was the first time that marshall told people that economics is not only about wealth it is more than wealth so how did he define economics he said economics is a study of mankind in the ordinary business of life it is the study of mankind this is where he differentiated they said economics is the study of wealth he said it is the study of mankind further it examines that part of individual and social action which is most closely connected with the attainment and the use of material requisites of wealth he said it is study of that part of mankind which is related with attainment that is achieving acquiring it and then putting it to use for what for material well being of man now he said it is related with wealth but it is not only related with wealth it is related with achieving wealth and then putting it to use for the welfare of human beings thus it is on one side the study of wealth and on the other the more important side of part of study of man it is not only the study of wealth but it is the study of a more important concept a more important thing that is the man himself so he so he increased the scope of economics next pigo tried to define economics in his own way but his definition is also considered as wealth definition or the material well being definition the range of our inquiry becomes restricted now please note that he is talking about the inquiry but now he is limiting the range of inquiry adam smith said it is an inquiry into the nature and causes of wealth now he is also saying it is an inquiry but it is a restricted inquiry into what so that part of social welfare that can be brought directly or indirectly into the 
relation with measuring rod of money now two things to note here he said the inquiry becomes limited to that part of social welfare now it's a contrasting definition from what adam smith said he said it is the study of wealth it was a very materialistic definition but pigu is defining economics as an inquiry into that part of social welfare social welfare means where the public is benefited where the masses are benefited it is for the welfare of the general cause that can be brought directly or indirectly in relation with the measuring rod of money and how do you measure that welfare by money so he is saying right you measure the economics you measure so he said right you measure the economics with money but it is not only related to money it is related to a bigger concept a bigger issue which is social welfare this ends our definition about economics as being a science of material well being further economics was defined as a science of choice making who defined it professor lionel robbins and what did he say about economics economics is a science which deals with human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means which have alternative uses he said it is a science which studies about human behavior now this was the first time actually when economics was formally called as science before this they all before this they always defined economics as a study but the first time mr robbins defined economics as a science science of what science which studies human behavior further he said it studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means ends means wants and scarce means are limited resources friend i would like to draw your attention back to our first video wherein we studied what is economics we said economics is trying to strike a balance between limited resources and unlimited wants and this is precisely what mr robbins is trying to convey he is saying that it is a relation between ends which means wants and scarce means that is limited resources scarce resources depleting resources which have alternate uses now these resources do not have single use they have alternative use now there are four things to talk about first it is science second it talks about ends that is wants third it talks about scarce means and finally those scarce means have alternative uses so i've explained you that economics is a science it is a body of knowledge it studies about human behavior so it is science it studies about human wants it studies about human cravings it studies about human needs and how are those needs those needs are never ending if one want is satisfied other crops in if that is satisfied a new want takes birth so this process goes on and not only this process at a particular time humans have multiple wants so in short humans have endless wants unlimited wants but the means to satisfy them are limited the means to satisfy them are scarce so he said it is a balancing act how do you balance unlimited wants and limited means now if this was the situation if resources were limited and means uh, wants were unlimited we would not have problems because we knew what resources are to be applied for what wants and we did not have any problem making a choice there was no question of making a choice so where does this 
question of making choice arise it is because of these alternative uses a single bond has alternative uses a single 100 rupee note can help you go to a movie can buy you an ice cream can buy you a beer can recharge your phone your wants are limited agreed but the resources to satisfy them are limited not only limited they have alternative uses this is where the problem of choice making comes in so this is how we define economics as a science of choice making finally we come to the last definition of economics economics as a science of dynamic growth and development now what does this term dynamic growth and development mean dynamic growth means economics is a science which is related to growth it is not an individualistic science of only about making choices it is related with growth and development so mr paul samuelson was the first person who tried to define economics in this fashion what did he say economics is the study of how men and society choose with or without the use of money to employ scarce resources for product to employ scarce productive resources which could have alternate uses now if you look carefully till here he is subscribing to the definition of lionel robbins he is saying the same thing he is saying economics is a study of how men and society choose with or without the use of money to employ scarce productive resources which could have alternate uses and this is exactly what lionel robbins said he adds to it by saying to produce various commodities over time and distribute them for consumption he is adding to mr uh, robbins definition he is saying agreed economics is about choosing how to use resources because they have alternative uses but it does not end there you have to put those resources to use you have to put those resources for production so that goods are produced and they are distributed for final consumption now and in future amongst various people and groups of society he has just added a single line saying resources have alternate uses but they have to be put to use for production of goods and those goods have finally to be supply to the society for consumption and this is the cycle which leads to growth you produce you consume you produce you consume and this is how you grow so economics is a science of growth next henry smith tried to define economics as the study of how a civilized society one obtains the share of what other people have produced and how the total product of the society change is determined it's exactly same he is talking about economics as a study of how a civ in a civilized society one obtains the share of what other people have produced again he is talking about production he is talking about two groups producers and the consumers and he is saying people produce and the society consumes but over a period of time the total product of the producers changes it goes on increasing and economics is nothing but study of this changing total product growing total product science of growth and development finally jacob weiner tried to define economics as economics is what economists do now this is the simplest definition of economics you will ever find he said economics is nothing but what economists do whatever an economist does is economics he may try to find out a new theory he may try to 
give a new proposition you may try to give you new concepts about economics whatever he does is economic so this ends our topic definition of economics